Let's go. <laughs> Pardon me. Where we're going. Like, we're gonna head to uh, Chelsea Garden Center, which is another great local plant shop that I have been going to for several years. You may remember them because we featured them on the channel at some of the best places to shop in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And I have to tell you, they are still one of the best places to shop. And Gina is kind of like my supplier. <laughs> so whenever I want an interesting plant, I ask her if she could get it. She's the person to ask. So they always have some pretty interesting varieties. Um, I don't know, I mean, I, we might be hitting them at a time when they are clear out of plants. So sometimes you go in there and it's like a full on jungle. So we'll see what they have. Gina saw leche the other day. She told you. She said, she's a lovely chicken. But she's not like Kippy. But she's not like Kippy. <laughs> I know, and I know she's not like Kippy. And it turns out that she really likes to be in a coop, so I am chickenless today, even though I told Gina I would probably bring her. House plants and more. All right, well, I'm just gonna take a look at your plants if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Manhandle them a little bit. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> so they have some Masonianas here. Look at this, some whale fins. Very nice. Up here, yeah. No one bought this uh, big snake plant yet. Look at this. Could be my prom date. <laughs> Dress it up a little bit, you know, put, a put on a tux. <laughs> so you have some nice Monstera Edinsonii right here, already getting some fenestrations. And you have some of your Ficus Lyrata. And your Alocasia Poly. I tell you, I am, these plants are really hard to keep indoors. I find they are spider mite magnets, so I've just given up on them. Maybe I'll try them at another time, but I find that they're spider mite magnets, but they look so cool. Look at, like they have this shield shape, dark green, and they have this purple underside. So nice. Right in, if you've been really successful at growing these without any spider mites, tell me in the comments below because I wanna know. Inquiring minds wanna know, Hoyas? This is a Hoya Carnosa. This is a variegated version. And I would love to get one of these, not for my Brooklyn apartment, but maybe for the new place. This is Schifflera actinophila. I grew up with a beautiful Schifflera that my mom had, and they do get to be pretty big. This one's already a pretty large specimen, but they get much larger than this. So if we have a building with high ceilings, I would love to get a Schifflera. These are called umbrella trees, and you can see why, because they have these leaves that um, hang like umbrellas, like little parasols. Yep, so here's another Hoya Carnosa. These are nice, like on a totem. It's really nice. And then here is a Monstera adansonii on a totem. So you can see the fenestrations are getting a little larger than those ones that we saw. This is really stunning too, this alocasia. And um, it's got that purple underside as well. Never tried this one indoors, but it'd be kind of interesting. Their tenanthes look good too. So these are tenanthes, I believe, Lubersinianas. Yeah, they didn't finish on the scientific name there. But these are nice, and it looks like they, this one right here, I was gonna say it has nice shiny leaves right here. This one looks hand polished. <laughs> and then here's another beautiful ficus elastica. It's kind of like a dark color between the black and the green. These come in a lot of um, interesting shades. If you look up high, 
Keep it out of reach of children. Peperomia argyria. Very nice. I'm saying nothing about the Dracaenas, but these are great. I actually ended up purchasing one of these Dracaenas for um, 111 Montgomery. Okay, so we just got the delivery in from Chelsea Garden Center. I went the other day to pick out some plants. I always see Chelsea Garden Center doing their like un unwrappings, I would say unboxings, but unwrappings on their Instagram. So now I get a chance to do it myself. So this is the tall plant. This is the Dracaena marginata. And um, I wanted something with a little bit more punky foliage that uh, didn't have as many leaves down here. So I didn't go with the uh, corn plant, which is kind of the stubbier one with the thicker leaves that kind of have leaves all throughout. So um, having this statement piece that again is a little bit more columnar and then having the green foliage on top is gonna be important. This is a little bit taller than I expected because initially I was thinking of it over here and I wanted to get one of those torchier lamps which has a light that goes a little bit higher up than me so it would have been a little bit taller and it would have bounced off the light of the white ceilings and then another one, a second lamp that would come out that you could adjust and you could put the plant under it. But they went with this piece from West Elm instead, which looks beautiful, but it's not going to serve as much of the purposes as I wanted with the plants. So we're just going to have to go with what we have here. So I might end up putting a smaller plant under here and leaving that Dracaena a little bit closer to perhaps the window over here. So we'll have to see. This is uh, the braided kind. So you could have where it's more of the green on top. So if you didn't want to detract away from whatever is behind it, it has a little bit more of this braided look. So it has these uh, stems growing up, you know, because if it was green all over, it could really block what's behind it. So if you want to see the wall or the work workmanship behind, you probably wouldn't go with something like this, which has green everywhere. All right, let's see what's over here. They have some herbs. This is bronze fennel. Ooh. I don't know if you can smell this. Take a whiff of this in through your mask. You smell that? Yeah. I definitely want to be, this is what I mean when I was sharing with you that I want to grow things that have a little bit more of a lacy texture. So you can see how lacy this is. And this is a great herb, obviously, that you could use, but if you grow this in full sun, it's going to get these really bronzy leaves. And this serves as food for the parsley worm, which is a type of uh, swallowtail. It will become a swallowtail butterfly. So parsley, fennel, I think dill, that all serves as a host plant for that, which is really nice to be able to, um, you know, have that rosemary. So in these parts, there's like one rosemary that is really hardy for cold temperatures. And that's like rosemary arp. That's the cultivar name. But I, I, there's another cool of rosemary that I'm thinking about growing on the property that is more of a trailing rosemary. So it kind of hangs over the edge. So that's for outside. Right? That outside, inside, you could probably get away. Some of these Mediterranean plants like rosemary, they there's not many cultivars that will exist in this cold of temperatures in winter. So um, sometimes you have to bring them inside or otherwise they act as annuals. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what this is. Let's see, just pulled it out of its thing. Oh, this is stevia. See, I've never grown stevia, so I don't think I've ever really paid attention to what that looks like. It's kind of a cute little flower. It looks like a, it looks like a bone set flower a little bit. Look at that. No, there's nothing, the leaves are nothing to cry home to mom about, but 
I guess if you want an alternative to sugar. Oh, and here, they have like little Peperomia prostratas right here. That's neat. And then you can see they have this Tradescantia. I think this is a type of Tradescantia palita with the, but they have the cultivar name as Nanook. Tradescantia, oh, Flumiensis tricolor. So they, it's not Tradescantia palita, it's Tradescantia flumiensis, tricolor nanook. All right. And then this doesn't look exactly like some Kalenkoe's, but this is a Kalenkoe blossfeldiana. Very common in, uh, to be sold in the winter months. And they come in all different colors, bright colors, like this pink fuchsia. And you'll see that they have the yellow and orange right up over here. So you could deadhead these. So once their blooms are finished, you could cut off the tops. You might be able to get a second bloom out of them. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice little selection right here. And lots of snakes. And then this is really nice. This is another type of jungle cactus. But you gotta be watch out because those these might stick you a little bit. String of bananas. I actually left this one out on my fire escape. And I am going to see, I mean, it really doesn't do well past 32 degrees. So you don't want it to be in freezing temperature and it's been freezing. So I will see if it lasts for springtime, but I don't know. Um, we'll see how hardy it actually is. But I find these out of all the string ofs, string of, uh, you know, string of, what are they? I have string of dolphins, you have string of beads. I find these to actually be the uh, hardiest indoors. All right, I think that's it. It's a really good overview. It's um, going, it's going, Summer. You're gonna throw it away? Yeah. Why is it dead? I don't know, I don't know. It might've just been lack of light. It's been in that sun and you can't put this. <laughs> Well, I gotta get all these dead things off. Hey, we'll try it. You want a bag? Yeah, maybe. Gina gives me her dead stuff. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a half dead scissors home. I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea for me taking plants because I'm only spending half time in Brooklyn and I'm trying to like downsize a little bit. But I can't say no, otherwise it's going to go in the trash. That's so it's dreadful. Not even, it's not as bad as the other one I threw out. <laughs> Poor guy. Probably spent six months. Okay. All right. I'll there get this go. home. Take we'll care. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <off>. Gina. <laughs> Your mission has now started. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episodes because we'll be continuing our tour through local plant shops. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're keen to help the channel grow and see more botanical content, subscribe and hit that notifications bell while you're at it. And if you're looking for more tactical plant care, then you could turn to the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first online audiovisual course on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.